Barbara, do you want to say anything on the budget amendment for the um, collection department? Yeah, that was just on the um, on the transfer for to, to do the part time temporary, um, and it, I think it encompasses thirteen weeks. So that was an item that we discussed during budget, and originally she had requested a new position, and so this is to support that part time and. Um, yeah, 13 weeks, and so she's connected with Kay to make sure we don't cross that line in the sand and where it turns into full time. And I wanted to give the court just a couple of figures because uh, Laura and I chatted on this. So the 13 weeks and these these new dollars will be allocated towards working about 3,500 cases that fall under all of the district courts building. So they'll be researching uh, what category that's in, whether these individuals are even back in prison or if they're on probation or parole to start that collection process and there's four million dollars in that bucket uh, so I, I wanted to kind of just share that as you see that line item just a little bit. Okay. any other questions i make a motion that we approve the budget amendments for the 2015-2016 fiscal year is presented second Motion and the second. All in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. Vouchers. Consider an act upon the approval of the plan of vouchers. Process by the county officer's office for the period of July 20, 2016 through August 17. Check numbers 170137 through 170374 and wire transfer 763 through 768 in the amount of $2 million. $967,142. Okay, and add on to that another 95, right? 95,348. Okay. For a total of $3,058,485.42. Comments, questions? I do have one question, Judge. Page 15 of 32, check number 170272, the amount of $2,700 for in rescue. Fire station outfitters a recliner. That's a nice one. Four recliners. Are, are they to go into the new station? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Those are new ones from the station. And are they actual recliners or are they just? No, they're uh, heavy duty recliners. Why do we need recliners in there? They're for the crew room. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. All crews have to be able to explain to our next crew room. Thank you. I move that we approve the vouchers as ordered by the county judge and the amount of $3,000,000. $3,000,000. Thank you. Insurance report to recognize the insurance fund report. Is there anything mm -hmm. significant you want to talk about that becomes the same? Okay, so recognize. The treasurer's report, Leanne, is not feeling well today. She wanted me to tell you that everything, nothing on here is changed from last time. Everything's good. She was just not feeling well this time. Number seven, resolution, Emerald Potter Events Venue District to consider an act upon a resolution authorizing the issuance of the Emerald Potter Events Venues District Special Tax and Lease Revenue Refunding Bonds, New Series 2016, to take any action necessary. I'm sure. Is passing out some information on the refunding. This is a refunding of the 2005 bond issue for the Emerald Potter Events Venue District. And we had the opportunity to um, take advantage of lower interest rates. So I'll have Stephen go over those numbers. And Glenn McMenemy, who's the chairman of the, the district board, is also here. And just so you know, this is the venue district's bonds, and it's supported by a pledge on the venue district's hot tax. And cardinal tax, and then it also has 
a pledge from the city of Amarillo in the form of a lease that um, is a secondary pledge on these bonds. So we are requesting that Potter County approve this bond issue. The venue district meets at 10 o'clock this morning to consider it, and then the Amarillo City Council will meet tomorrow evening to also consider the approval of this issue. Michelle, what was that second tax you mentioned, the hot tax and the lease? There's a car rental tax that the venue district receives, and those are the pledge on this, it's a revenue bond issue. But there is also a secondary pledge, the city of Amarillo has a, a pledge on this to make the, basically make the monthly debt service payments if needed. And I uh, can share that there's never been a, a month where the, the monthly debt service payment was, was needed The venue district's revenues completely cover this debt service. Okay. Thank you, Judge, Member of the Court, Stephen Adams, Specialized Public Finance. And in order to uh, fix this bond issue, we did a public offering. We had three underwriting firms, the lead firm of Stephen Nicholas and Company. So last Thursday, they went out and basically <coughs> priced and took orders for $5,085,000 uh, special tax and lease revenue bonds. We did get the bonds rated. They're rated double A plus primarily because of the city of Camarillo's pledged, the city's rated AAA, and with the, it's really it's subject to appropriation, so it's one notch off that at AA plus. And when we did the bonds, we, we increased the maturities from the year 2035 to 2046, because the institution of the venue district only lives as long as the bonds. So we do this to make sure that we continue to have the, the additional hotel occupancy tax and <clears throat> Uh, car rental tax to be in place to do the improvements on the projects that were approved by the voters. So we sold the bonds at a true interest cost of 2.963%. So if the bonds that go all the way to 2046, it's a really good tax exempt rate. Um, even though there was more debt service because we stretched it out to the present value savings, which will show up in the footnotes of the Indian District's audit, it will show a present value savings of 581000 $723, and that's primarily from the reduced interest rate of the bonds. And if you go to page two, what you'll see is the outstanding bonds, which were issued back in 2005, had coupon rates between 4 and 4.5 percent. So we turned those into 2.963 true interest cost. So we saved about $132,000 through 2035, and then Extending the debt, of course, there's new debt, so uh, that's uh, $280,000 of additional debt service through those half years. Uh, just to let you know, on page three, all the costs of issuance were paid from the bond proceeds, and so that's all included in the sources and uses on page five. If you're interested, I'm sorry, page three. Page four is the actual debt service on the new refunding bonds. And then uh, it's, you, you see we sold level debt service for this bond issue. It does go longer, but the debt service is level uh, for the venue district. And then on page five, you will see a timetable of events. Michelle went over uh, most of it, but we did have rating calls went through. We priced it last Thursday on the 18th. We have your meeting today in the venue district here this morning at 10, City of Amarillo Council meeting on the 23rd. And then if, if it is approved by these three boards, uh, commission and council, we will close on September the 20th. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have, but um, we are asking for your approval of uh, ratifying or selling these bonds. I do have a couple of questions if I if All I right. so I'm following the presentation of Michelle that this there may be a couple kind of questions as well. Um, so you're requesting five million dollar reissuance. Is that is that a fair it, it's, Yeah, it's like a refunding or refinancing of five million eighty five thousand. Okay. And is that due to the change in interest rate primarily? Correct. So we're going from four to four and a half percent down to two point nine three six. So the lower interest rate provides <laughs> opportunity for savings, yes. And do you have any projected savings that you're expected to realize as a part of that change? The present value savings are 581000 
$734. We will have more total debt service because we're going out an additional 11 years. Okay, so you're taking the debt. Not only are we reissuing re for a better rate, but you're extending Correct. the debt out. Correct. For an additional years. amount. Yes, ma'am. What would be the reason for that? If we, the venue district, uh, and those additional tax revenues stay in place only as long as there's debt outstanding. So historically, whenever we've had a refund of the venue district, we've gone as long as we can to increase the life of the venue district. Okay. And so that those revenues will come in to enhance uh, the county facilities and the city facilities. Because if you pay off all this debt, those revenues will go away. In fact, the venue district will go. Really? That's interesting. I didn't, I didn't know that. So the debt, in this case, is really what keeps the venue district Correct. alive? Yes, ma'am. We've gone through a refinancing at the county and we have seen the benefits of doing that, but we, um, our, our vision was not to extend out the debt because obviously the yeah, payoff- Yeah, the county will be here sense. regardless. Sure. Right. So you're extending out an additional loan Yes, ma'am. Are there any, um, is there any interest to take on additional debt after that or? The, the venue district can't sell new bonds without an election mm -hmm. and it can't, provide money for a new project without an election. And as far as I know, there are no plans for an election. I um, mean, you would probably concur to that, but the district would have to initiate that process and the county would have to approve it and the city. So it's a fairly large undertaking to do that. Um, and so that makes sense, the methodology, because in the backup that was provided to the court, it's speaking to a, I'll just call it reissuance, but from 1998 to 2000 to 2005 to 2007 or nine, and then now current. And I kept thinking, I wonder why we keep refinancing this. Um, as it relates to the board, one of my questions, and certainly uh, Mr. McMenemy, this just may be for you as well. I, I wasn't aware who was on the board, but I did find it um, online on the city website. And I've got Mr. McMenemy, Terry Wright, Tom Bivens, Dean Roper, Bill Brewer, Butch Collard, and Vance Reed. Did I miss anyone? Okay. I can't understand your question. We don't send those bonds out. Or can not that one thing? That is the extension to one of the between the hotel tax and the hospital. If we pay off the bonds tomorrow, we pay income to quit. Right. That, yes. If you don't want to inherit that damn thing, I promise you. <laughs> We're so, we've had 14 events this year that came from out of state, out of town. We have paid the hotel and hotel tax because we owe those people for it. That's where we get our money from that car rental tax. But the last thing we'll do is make those bonds run out. I think what, 1964 now? Uh, 46, yes. 46. A lot of y'all be retired by then. I won't even be here for you. <laughs> anyway, Marsh, I want to tell you. You're right where we're going to be because if we don't, the money goes away, then probably can't expect it. You don't want that to leave. Wow. Um, and then just one final question, Michelle. On this resolution, it references the original resolution when, when this all started, 923 97 That would be helpful to have because um, I don't know that many of us were on the court. I think there were several of us that at least were not. That'd be good background to have because I don't know that we necessarily tap into that very well. I know the, the venue district exists and the footprint, but how we can continue to kind of understand that vision in that direction, that'd be great to just have as a reference. That's right, I think she can, yes. That's all the questions I have. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I move that we approve the resolution authorizing the issuance of the Cameron Old Potter Advanced Venue District Special Tax and lease revenue funding bonds <coughs> New series 2016. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. I see Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. One more time. We're talking about this optional. <laughs> Number eight is Texas Department of Motor Vehicles. Consider an act of the position of calendar 2017 optional county fees, including a proposed additional fee for support of board for a special Now, this is the one for the road and bridge fee, which is $10. And we have to vote on that today, correct, Jerry? Today's the deadline to vote on that. 
Okay, so where do we stand on the concept? I love the and unfortunately, I've not gotten an answer from the city and I'm sure I spoke with Ms. Hopkins after the commissioner's meeting um, two weeks ago, and then I know Ms. Navarro just reached out to her and um, just have not had very much success with the city at this point. So they got the city on the He's got the city on the line. Got the city on the line. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's hold on for this for a second. We'll go over the next time, okay? Okay. 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 Number nine, elections to approve an agreement between Potter County and United Citizens Forum to allow Potter County to install one asphalt ADA ramp, install two ADA parking signs, and post for the purpose of opening the facility. Funds from the election fund 236 will be used to cover the expenses that road which occurs. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we have the ability to go and vote at United Citizens Forum. This is a replacement for St. John. Very excited about this. People in the, in the neighborhood are very familiar with this location. Unfortunately, its ADA standard is a little bit low. And so Sebastian and I went out to talk and look it over and we think for a nominal amount, we can put an asphalt ramp in the front and put some signs up and bring it up to snuff for what it needs to be for voting. So this is really an agreement because we will be putting Potter County equipment on a private or nonprofit, basically non-county property. So that's why it's here. Okay. I don't have anything in my packet. Did you have the agreement with you? Can I not get that to you guys? I apologize for that. Well, then as you're doing that, what is the dollar amount that we're looking at? Three to four hundred dollars. Okay. How long will this project take? Oh, it won't take very long, just a few hours. What we had talked about was that he would make, he was not making things very simple, but he would just have a little bit of extra one day and stop by there. <laughs> you have any extra asphalt, just drop by. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what I requested. <laughs> Yes. And it's going to go right in front, right in front of their double doors, and then the two ADA parking signs will still remain on the side. One left, one right. So it looked like it was a very easy fix. It just needed to be done. I know that that's a location as well that the city uses quite often. That's the location for the neighborhood initiative discussions in the night. So the location as a whole is certainly unused. It is, but for our purpose, we, you know, we're doing it for voting. Right. Okay. Okay. I make a motion that we approve the agreement between Potter County and United Citizens Forum to allow Potter County to install one asphalt ADA ramp and install two ADA parking signs and posts for purpose of voting at the facility funds to come from 236. The motion and the second all in favor of the motion. Five zero. Thank you. Okay, can you keep that document signing? Give me a That's how I do that. Okay. <coughs> all right, let's go back to number eight. What did you find out? I just got a phone with the assistant city manager and uh, talking about the fee and calculation. From my understanding, what they were indicating through their finance department uh, that those fees that uh, for crossing cards are not fully funded. Okay. So, what does that? Uh, uh, In that event, the money collected for the special fee would have to would be dedicated to school projects. So, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we didn't do the business process. Right. Unless there was a portion that was left over, and then they can put that in the interest bearing funds, or like we said, we need to talk about. So I think with that information, it's certainly extremely risky to initiate the fund and ultimately the dollars go there and not really with what we're speaking to today. 
Um, I think just so everyone, so you know this, I'm sure each one of the commissioners, we got a letter from uh, the citizen that approached the court things in our minutes, um, really kind of speaking to that through her, that was the main concern and that she supported CASA, but the uh, school crossing guards, that that's the primary pur purpose of that. She, in her letter, also referenced that she wasn't opposed to an optional. Um, sure. I did follow up with Scott to ask for the, the code, the transportation code, and I will, I will certainly take the optional to King Commissioner Juan uh, to Representative Price, maybe as a discussion item for this legislative session as an optional, so, and I equate it mentally to how we do the jury, jury duty um, service piece, that mm -hmm. they can optionally move Absolutely. here or there, but um, I, we can certainly take that as the two to this legislative year. That's okay. That's all right. I appreciate your time and we'll be back. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so I need a motion. We need to make a motion on the, the fee as it stands, sharing on the bridge and the Yeah, we all need to approve the $10 for the bridge. I move that uh, our commissioners approve the $10 fee on the licenses. <clears throat> Is that second? Okay. 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 Sheriff's office and like King mm -hmm. X necessary. I'm not sure there is a ring, but lots of signs that he recognizes. Say this is uh, been ongoing for a while, and the, and the biggest problem right now is the construction workers are taking up the, the, the parking spots in the district court building, as, as well as our parking lot up here, and, and, and as well as along the street. So jurors are walking five or six blocks to get to the courthouse to to report and. It's terrible. So I have asked Mike to at least remove some cones in the north parking lot. I mean, the east parking lot. And I've talked to the neighbors. Nick here. No, but those cones that are there on the north side are there for the purpose. If we do not have any way to get our grounds maintenance vehicles in there uh, with our trailers, then we're going to be. And I, I told that's what I relayed to Nick on Friday afternoon that if he could remove the south cones and leave the north that would free up a couple of spaces but I, I don't know what i don't know what else to do i mean they, the district judges want to they consider striping and numbering i think that's way too expensive since the plan the big plan for the future is to destroy that building and rebuild so i hate to spend the money here's some I mean, yeah you're correct it's been a problem for over 30 years ever since that building's been put there uh, if you allow parking around the curbs, there's going to be a major problem you're going to have. Uh, you will not be able to get emergency vehicles into that parking lot. Fire trucks, ambulances, uh, they had a fire truck here over there within the last few years. They could not get out of the parking lot to respond. Uh, we've had ambulances come through there through the years. They, we've had some them park on the far east side, walk up the doors. Uh, if I could suggest this, general contractors that are over there utilizing uh, or parking within those areas uh, I don't mind doing it I think it would have more authority that came from the commissioners who would go to these general contractors and let them know they have worked something out with the city of Amarillo for their employees designated parking they walked off what is great uh, 7th street there's areas that has been reserved they're parking in the parking lot south of the city hall over there where he used to go over there so they had designated areas for parking i think that would be one thing that i would suggest to we have done that uh -huh. the district uh, judge board talked to uh, the contractor and told him our concerns um also i have gone over and talked to the, the two um, security guards over there and sheriff i don't know if you know this or not but they are dying to get tickets <laughs> they want to so can we get them a ticket back <laughs> to do that or no is that something you would be willing to no well, scott's saying no you're going hmm, um, 
we don't have any authority on that. Yeah. That's but uh, uh, that's the uh, record over there for just a little bit. Hey, you know, we guarantee you how one of those one of those uh, contractors trucks away. That resident will be gone. That's been brought up before. Y'all decided you didn't want to do that. I want to do that. We currently <laughs> put new signs up that say towing is enforced. Right. Enforced. So, Very simple. But we don't have I mean, yeah, we can do that. That's, what do you mean you don't have the authority to get a ticket? You're a sheriff, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the law you There's no offense. offense. Okay. There's no offense yeah. to park down park. The, 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 legal, the legal remedy for that is towing them off. There you go. That's the legal remedy is yeah. towing them. Let's get on it. And then you guys, you know, we're going to have to be our, use our due diligence on making sure that that person is not there for some kind of court. Well, if you see a contractor that's up there in park, and honestly, that's going to take somebody standing out of the park. Well, let me tell you, I talked to a couple of your guys, and they see them every day. Same people park there and walk over to the, the and, job site. And I understand that. I mean, I don't have a problem doing that. That's your witness. I'm telling you, take one time and pile one of those vehicles up. No, I can't really the rest of them will understand. Oh, not another. I'm not talking about the construction. I know, but I didn't have a personal item. Yeah, well, I know KJ is the um, general contractor over there, and uh, he was the one who was to the LGC. So I, I don't, I mean, I'm sure that a call has been made, but it may be helpful. To get another call to the general manager out there so that he knows starting this day to give information on the road. Especially if we're really looking at towing. Um, you know, I think it would just take a couple of days for you to even put some flyers on your windshield. Yeah, I, I have it. I can give it to you about Judge Tanner. But even if it's something as simple as flyers underneath windshields, starting this day, uh, we will effectively be enforcing towing. You know, something so that there's went up last Friday, right? Thursday, or Friday, so it's in effect right now. But just a little more of a notice, I guess. You know, when we see a piece of paper under our windshield, I'm just trying to lean as best as we can on those to help that change. Okay, anything else, Mike? I'm waiting on the calls to come in regarding your request on the parking arms. It gets through that, so yeah. hope they'll have those calls. Okay. Okay. All right. We won't take any action today to make it in the home contract. Okay, number 11 is County Park Raiders Park Road Plan to consider next on the document. Okay, number 11 is County Park Raiders Park Road Plan to consider next on the document. Is there anything you need to say on this, Carrie, or your staff, or anything you need to know? No change in fees. Okay. Uh, the only thing, and Carrie, I don't know if I have this. It, this could be incorrect in my notes. It has the, the two bullet points of how the fees are going to be used or collected and used. Should there be an additional third bullet point that um, there was also a loop back to help pay for Tyler? I don't know if it, it's this account. It may not be. It is. Okay. Okay. I make a motion to approve the adoption of the account for archive plan for 2016-2017. The 12 sheriffs and constables fees to consider an act upon approving the sheriffs and constables fees. Civil process fees for 2017. Are there any increases? There will be increases, but we did add that last time we made the fee. Motion that we approve the sheriff and con the constable civil process fees for 2017. Second. Motion and second. All in favor, raise your hand. Number 13, fire station number three. Consider an act on the date and time for dedication ceremony for fire station Good morning. You have, you you have raised the concern of Commissioner Precinct 1 that this is golf day. 
<laughs> we would like to do it on Friday, September 9th at 2 o'clock. We'll keep it short, Commissioner. We don't put any it's chairs. too late, but it's okay. okay. There's, there's no chairs out, nobody's sitting down. Hopefully, things go quickly. Would you say 2 o'clock? Yes, ma'am. We'll do the dedication ceremony at 2. And then our plans are to follow up with an open house till seven or eight o'clock that evening for the public to come by and see the facility. We've had a lot of new people stopping by going, we are you gonna open it up? So we're gonna let it sit up. Okay, do we need a phone I don't know if y'all need I don't know what y'all need to do so that you're all five of you can be there. Well we'll have to post. Thank you. Okay, number 14, Commissioner's Board Strategic Planning Topics to review the strategic planning topics for 2016 2017 year. Judge, I don't have a lot of discussion on this. I'll be, I'll be quick, but you have a copy in uh, your packet this time. So this was a follow up from our budget discussions. And so I only put this on the agenda. Um, if you have any edits or additions, this is just my notes, so I'm sure it's not complete. <laughs> Um, and the vision for this, we haven't worked through logistics, so all that will need to come. This is just a springboard to that. These are topics that it's really hard to add them to our agenda because it makes for a very, very long day. And during budget, it's kind of too late to talk about these things. So again, not a lot of framework just yet. That's gonna come. But even if we picked one day per month uh, and started to address the topic and we went through, uh, that, that could get us for a whole year easily. So again, more to come. This was just in there to get us started and thinking about it and any additions. So you, so you want to meet as a court? As a full court, yeah. As a full court, I mean, we had, we would need to post it. Would department did and what's the person? I think it depends on the topic, but absolutely. I mean, this would be really critical for department. I think we need to go through the methodology of how we want to do this and uh, prior to that. But yes. And these are not in any particular order at all. I mean, I just went through my notes. So this is really just a follow-up from our budget and a springboard to start discussing that. So more to come. This is a, uh, just a little uh, process concern. Uh, I don't have any problem with the issues. These are issues that we need to talk about. So I'm going to call it strategic planning. Okay. Strategic planning is where a organization determines its vision, its mission, its its goals, its objectives. This is not, this is talking about particular issues. And uh, so I think the terminology strategic plan is wrong. And we debated that, um, mm -hmm. Commissioner. And so for the sake of not, uh, Judge Canner, why not put it on the agenda? So for the sake of not knowing what to call it yet, we just put that on because it's what we referenced during budget. So if you have um, some new terminology, all that is certainly fair game and part of the process. I'll wait for your feedback on that. Uh, 15 National Procurement Institute recognized the uh, County Purchasing Department as earned the 2016 Annual Achievement of Excellence in Procurement Award. And how many years in a row is this? That says number 10. 10 years in a row. Very good job. Very I'm good. Like I said, I have been for six months. Official I'm letter right here. Yeah. Do you want this official letter? Uh, I have one. one. Okay. okay, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good job. <laughs> Jason, will we have this status on the website with all the other accreditations? Yes. Okay, perfect. There's all kinds of things up there now. Historical Commission, Transparency. All right, number 16, sale of county property. Consider an act upon the proposal to sell county on vacant lots at 901 as well as 905 sale to Jackson. And procedures for conducting such a sale. Yeah. So if you want to sell those lots, there's three options. It goes with the bank. Public option, see if they do it. Or if they do it. Well, I already uh, received a call from a local realtor that has a buyer if uh, we're interested in selling that property for cash. So. I didn't know what the procedure was, but obviously it's going to have to be process to put it out there. I'll let him know that. But yeah, that's a huge I was very advised. Whatever the going price was. What is the going price? Right now? Uh, 
that's what you have to you have to add it to a phrase. Done. You, know, you, can, you can't use price figures as price figures. Just what's taxed. If you if you sell through the sealed bid, then you can legally have to pay the price. <coughs> if you go through a broker, then you can pay the price. It's a one that is broken. Well, let's tell them about the broker. Transaction. I've spoken to a couple of district parties and let them know that these are the options. So the first, if you go to conceptually consider selling the bonds, and if so, why would you So, the commission from the expressed the language and what the It's only going to escalate in price, and so I even think individually, if anyone owned a lot now, before everything is really up and built, I don't think it's the prime time to sell. I'm not opposed to selling anything that we don't have a vision to use. I think that's good stewardship, but I think it is not good business practice if we own anything and what we are not, I mean, we're putting into the tiers. We don't see that money until 2036. So if there's anything we own, it does not appear to be at all to be a good, a good business move to sell that. I might, add, I might add to the gentleman that was interested in this putting in a business right across the street needs that, uh, obviously needs that area. That's why his interest was being. And Brandon has helped this morning in case the commissioners are, are interested in seeing this, but we do have Google Maps open and we can take a 360 look around that property in case not everyone has had time to go by and see it. But we do have that queued up if anyone's interested. Yes. Okay, Judge. Not going to teach your school Mike, you and I talked about this before too, about keeping them for six years. This property was acquired whenever we purchased the Santa Fe building that came along with it. Santa Fe utilized that as one. And there's two lots, Judge, and according to the appraisal district website, they're about 16000 each today within its raw, undeveloped form as we see it now. So it's not like we have a million dollar lot we're sitting on and not wanting to sell. It's pretty nominal and it will only increase in value because it is in this downtown footprint. Well, I don't think unless we have a future use for it, there's any reason to keep property. Because uh, it's exempt from any taxes, even if it's only valued at sixteen thousand. At least we get that because that's at the base level of uh, four tiers. If that's what you're concerned about, at least we can put it back into the, the tax rolls. Uh, I guess I think we're just wishful thinking that this part. We're two or three blocks west of. Uh, a pole, and I don't think that that's going to be a boom right anytime soon. I get my thoughts on it. We don't really know right now with the potential growth, and we do know that the, the downtown area is the, the focus of all the growth. I don't think it's never going to grow there if we just let it stay in our I think it'd be a really good location for a mental health facility. I'm not I'm just saying, we know that they will. Yeah. <laughs> They're already there. <laughs> I think I see something else. Okay, we'll move on just a little while on the CB. I'll just do a CB. Oh, yes. I'm not opposed to the sale, uh, like you said, so put it up for a bid and uh, see what happens. I, I'd like to make a motion to, uh, to sell the property. I'll second. Do you need to specify, Tad, which form the three options? I think you did. Hey, that was separate. Okay. Thank you. But that's just if we decide to proceed with it. So. Okay, I have a motion and a second on the table to sell the property at 901 Jackson. All 
all in favor raise your hand. Else on there? No, how long has that property been vacant? It's been about the same. It's been about the property. 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 It's been all right, number 17, Panhandle Auto Burglary and Theft Unit Interlocal Agreement. To consider our next one, every interlocal agreement with the City of Atlanta to continue to grow participation in the auto burglary and theft of engineering This is just a little less showing the grant Just one quick question to provide that additional two thousand. There, there's a clause in there. Is that in our proposed budget currently? Um, no, actually, the county is providing less. It's the city of Amarillo that is providing two thousand. Okay. We actually have seven different entities that we're going to put in two thousand each to the local public use contribution. I hope that we approve. Second. Okay. The motion and a second on the paper is written. Has we had a report of what their activities have been here since it's Randall gave us a follow up report the last time he came. He sent us a, an email with the report. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you like a printed like copy. I'll print you one off. She's tough today. Look at her. I'll, I'll print you one off. He sends this one once a month. She's okay. Cheers. Okay. Sure, we'll do that for him. He needs it in print. Big. Yeah, big. <laughs> big letters. <laughs> yeah. Okay, number 18, Sabbath's maintenance, grant contract. You can see the name of the approval. Statewide Automated Victim Notification Service Grant Contract with the Office of the Attorney General of Texas to NDR Post Judge Tanner to sign the service agreement renewal notice and the maintenance contract. Again, this is a continuation of the previous grant since 2003, and we have the grant page for the third party to work with the victim notification. No changes contractually carried on this. I make a motion that we approve the statewide automated victim notification service grant, the Office of the Attorney General of Texas, and to authorize Judge Tanner to sign the renewal notice and maintenance contract. The motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. Number 19, capital credit funds to certify the receipt of $3,332.33 under Texas Property Code number 741602, determine the use of these funds and set a budget accordingly. This is what we do every year. Last year we gave to the SAT PAC and the bridge. And I could move it into their arts. I, for one, and all four may have been about the kids. Um, I like the bridge, I like the snack pack, or whatever else. Does anybody else have anything that they would like to see the code for us? I do have something, Judge, if I may. Um, I tried to do some work and background on this. but So this is only our second year uh, of receiving the dollars, and certainly they're not a lot of dollars, but 3000 and kind of new money, if you will. Um, there's also approval to use this fund to administer or to develop or administer a program in particular as it relates to our purchasing policy. And there is a clause um, to extend, to improve or extend in which women and minority businesses are awarded funding contracts. So that's allowed as a part of the initiative. 
I did work a little bit with Vicki and um, had a proposal that would well exceeded this amount that we have. But I think there's also opportunity with these dollars that we don't, we don't know exactly what it can look like yet, but I don't think we have to use it all in one year. I think we can roll it over. And I, I'm not saying all, I'm saying a portion of it um, and in particular, the reason this you know kind of hit my heart is obviously we have two women on the court, which is not traditional for many counties in, in Texas. What would that um, money be used for? Though? Well, all you have to do is have a policy that you use those women minority businesses and purchasing. Yeah. Work. So what, what would the money go for? Um, I think the money would go towards really looking at developing a policy, something like that. And, and again, it's not my expertise. I'm just saying the money can be used in that way. I think this would involve a third party coming to look in, see what other counties are doing across uh, the state of Texas and even out of Texas. I know this is a topic that's even been addressed at the city level. So again, I don't know what it can look like yet, but what I'm, what I'm saying is I think we have an opportunity. We, this is only our second year, so we don't really have a precedence. It's really hard year three and real year five because we, you know, we always give when we give it to traditionally. But we don't always have these opportunities as a court. I mean, we're always limited with how we can use dollars. Can we not state that as a court that uh, we would have a good policy? Uh, can we just state that uh, as a court? I think That's the way I think it would work. But I, mean, I don't know what you mean. I think do that. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just thinking out of the box here. A little different. This is new money. This is only our second year. Okay. Okay. We can, Establish a policy yet yeah, because we don't even know if we're going to get that money in review. Correct. We never know. Correct. But if, we, and I'm not saying we would reoccurring kind of bank on these dollars to for a policy. I'm saying we could use these dollars to help develop a policy that we don't have this expertise on the board to do. And Vicki is fairly new to the county. Um, and certainly we've, we've talked about this directly as well. But what I wanted to have is something queued up and maybe a proposal that might be ready for us to look at and say, oh, this would cost $2,000 or $2,500. That's not where we are yet. Um, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention. But it was something I was vetting. I think it's an opportunity. It's definitely thinking outside the box. And, and I think that in particular hit my heart because obviously we've got two women on the court, which is not traditional. So for the second, the RPC sure. has worked in that field for a long time. They have the expertise. We already paid them. I think we can give them if we proceed down that process. Yeah. Well, that's the way to go. That's that's good. Good. Look at that, Scott. Uh, and we, uh, as a court, say uh, we would like to know a policy to entertain that that, uh, that idea that Commissioner was speaking to, and uh, and we would uh, write it down that that, that act. We would maybe need to develop the methodology to do that. Certainly, as, as a court, you have the implied authority to adopt any kind of policy consistent with the law in the execution of any any function you have legal authorization to form. So, yet the short answer is yes, you, you do have the authority to do that. What form that would take is kind of up to you. And I think that's the piece I'm speaking to, and the what form it will take. Um, I think this is where we have a little bit of room to use some dollars a little differently than the way we have them today. When we develop a policy like that, we're going to only know what we know on the inside. You can only know what you know. And so I saw this as an opportunity to have an outside lens into the county policy and say, can we do something better? Can we do it different? What are other people doing? You know, all of those questions. And again, this is a very small dollar now. I obviously don't have a lot of skin in the game. I'm just bringing you an idea because this isn't costing our local budget and we don't have a lot of precedence yet. It's only year two. This would be difficult to come to the court year five and say, well, we want to completely change how we use these, these dollars. So. so you're saying that we need to keep some of these dollars aside? For something, yeah, for something to that effect. And can, we, I, can we roll that over? Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, keeping with your with children and uh, considering what the last three meetings we've had something from Casa very interested in some sort of funding source 
I would rather see us do something like the process. Judge, you could still, I mean, and I'm just looking, again, it's only, it's $3,000, but I mean, you could look at a $500 you could look at a five hundred dollar donation to SACPAC, CASA, the bridge, because the bridge was also here, and then whatever's left over, kind of reserve that or protect it, and that will give us a little more time. It's not a lot of money. I don't expect a big initiative at all, but if you're three, we have an opportunity to do something again similar to that. It helps kind of build that fund. Um, and again, just trying to take a concerted effort at our process. I'd like to give a thousand each to those three organizations. I'll make a motion that we divide it in three equal parts to the bridge, snack pack, pack for kids, and uh, cost. Divide it three in three ways and hold it down. Not anymore, so than the greater. Next year, for, for different purposes. It's not going to be a yearly deal. That's the right. That's my understanding. Well, we'll apply for the money every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, could, we could have three different entities that we want to the money. I think what we traditionally do, though, as a government entity, we kind of often do what we did before. And so, even though I agree with you, we're not establishing a precedence, but year three and year four, you kind of do. <laughs> but that's yeah. my opinion. It's because I think it's because the, the people will get kind of used to it. Oh, the county's going to give us this much. They count on it. That's okay, too. Okay, so I have a motion on the table to give to split the, the, the proceeds uh, three ways for those three things. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. Number 20, surplus property disposal. To consider an act upon disposing of the attached list of items that will not sell to auction. Okay, uh, we just are undergoing our pickups right now. I want to let you all, as commissioners, know that the net income from this auction was $84,316.40 <coughs> is what we're going through right now. So, Carrie, I don't know where that compares to prior. So don't have to <coughs> um, like I said, we have a lot of activity. So. We're in the process of collecting that right now. And these are the items that we need to have approval that did not sell. So um, with that being said, we just need a, to consider an act upon disposing of the attached list that did not sell at auction. I'll, I'll make that motion, Vicki. This may be the list that I referenced last time that gets emailed out to the nonprofit list. Yes, yes. Let's say, that. would you like this before we dispose of it, please? That's um, right. I make a motion that we approve disposing of the attached or the presented list of items that did not sell at auction and to send uh, email notification to non profit Yes. Could you make this a little smaller for this? I knew you actually thought about you, Commissioner Gallagher. I will have them enlarge at the next time. This is just came from our total list. Where's the bag? I'm not going to actually give it off to us. She's on her own. I have a motion to say all in favor. Raise your hand. We want children maintenance to consider an act of an agreement for children maintenance at the county courthouse and TV industries in the county $9,082 for TCP property contract number R1505-TX1-109. Continue in a while. I'll go ahead and go on. I'm still talking here. Okay, so we have to Good. So this is the uh, chiller maintenance agreement for this building here. It does include uh, both air-cooled and water-cooled chillers, plus the uh, water treatment service that we've received uh, 
same service we've had here for the past several years. Uh, the only change is, is there's an increase of slightly above a thousand dollars. Actually, it's less than a thousand dollars. So that's the only change. It is noted in in part of the uh, original terms and conditions. It talks about taxes and things like that. And I, I didn't have them excluded, but I did have them included that we do not pay taxes and we're not liable for any of that. So I'm just trying to go through the farm print. And is the increase um, accounted for in the original agreement somewhere? Is it, is it an expected increase? Yeah, everything goes up every year. So. Well, a lot of times there's uh, contract protections that if we either know it's going to increase 1% every year or we know it's not going to increase. No, I mean, this, is a, this, is, this is off the statewide contract. Yes, that's right. The, the statewide contract addresses those, so we're pretty much uh, at their uh, discretion. But this is what's helped us get some of the awards. It's utilizing the TCP and the tennis balls. So. I move we approve the agreement for summer maintenance of the county courthouse with TD Industries for the amount of nine thousand and eighty-two dollars. So the motion in a second all in favor and try to Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're you're ready to sign this one, Vicki? Yeah. Um, I'm happy to okay. Okay. All right, 22. We're going to come back to that one just a second. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll come back to the budget also. Um, Mike, you want to talk about any projects you got? Yeah. Okay. 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 Several items y'all need to be made aware of. Uh, I've given you a report. I'm going to jump down to the sheriff's department and come back to the same thing. The uh, sheriff's department projects, I'm in receipt of the 100% construction documents minus the change that y'all approved your walk back to relocate the building and enlarge the parking lot. I have received preliminary drafts of the opinion of probable cause from the architect. Uh, I'll be going through that this week and then I'll get with Carrie. We will visit uh, with architects as we're on the side here in the near future. Uh, Jason, do you have anything on fiber optic you'd like to report? No, I'm really good. Okay. Uh, the next committee meeting will be uh, September the 8th at 9 a.m. within the church department classroom. So if you're citizens, uh, we get those notices out, but if your citizens can be there, we'd appreciate it. While we will be looking at it, that meeting, knowing that everything goes correctly, we, as a committee, will be reviewing the 100% documents to seek permit, uh, permission to come to the commissioner's court to go out to bid with the opinion of probable cost in the grocery list. So that's where we hope to present everything to you as a total package to get ready to go to bid on this project. What day was that, Monday? Thursday. Thursday. But when you present the packet, if we're not on the committee, we will be given that. When we present it after it goes to the committee, then we will present it to the court. Okay. All the costs, related costs. Uh, Fire Station 3, uh, we've had a revision to the substantial completion from the 16th. Uh, actually, it is today. Uh, the change was granted with the uh, change orders that we put out there and the weather delays. Punch list, uh, we performed this last week, uh, 16th and 17th, we granted a two week extension to the general contractor to get the punch list done. Uh, that is to be completed just prior to the uh, grand opening ceremony. One of the big issues that run into out there is on the elevator. We are having issues getting the contractor, or we're not, the general contractor is getting the uh, Tis and Crump back in uh, with the state elevator inspector to get them get it inspected. Uh, I made some phone calls last week. They had originally stated September the 2nd. Hopefully, we'll be able to get that done this week or all work with the finish like that. Uh, fairgrounds, roofing projects. Uh, we are at 100% complete on them. We had some materials left over. Uh, Virgil basically, this in, the materials on this project isn't something that we can take back. Custom made, special built. 
So Virgil will be getting some of the insulation out there. Uh, this is Sebastian. He's going to assist us in picking up some curlings. I will deliver them out to the uh, Roman Brewery out there, passing them as a uh, project that they would like to utilize it on. So here it is your change order number one. This is for the Perlings, was valued at $12,237. This is where the original agreement was that the commissioner's court and the fair would split that cost 50 50. Uh, I believe, the, you know, we talked about that we'll go ahead and pay that whenever that uh, comes in and then if they need to address this with the fair board to split that cost. Uh, Judge Dan, I presume you will need something, the actual change order to present to them to split it. Okay. okay. Uh, change order number two, uh, that was an increase. Change order number two is a decrease. Uh, $1,165. This is for the north end of the Cody building where <coughs> Virgil elected not to install some insulation down there. So we've got a credit coming back on the labor. $1,165. Change order number two. Uh, Vicki, if I had, I'll get that out here today and get that process. <laughs> County Extension Project. Make the everything. Uh, the PO has been issued for the floor tile project. We'll be working with the contractor to get them out there. Uh, it'd be good if we could get them out there before the fair comes before we get this thing out of the way. So, Commissioner will be able to be working with the contractor. Uh, Santa Fe Terracotta project. Uh, it's going okay. We've been doing some walkthroughs. Uh, as of last Friday, uh, responded to some emails to the architect from the general contractor of Phoenix. Uh, uh, back when we did the project originally, we did limited terracotta restoration top of the building. Punch list caught problems they come out correct in the last three years. I've uh, shown y'all some pictures, you know, how bad some of that is up there. Uh, we run into another issue up there. Uh, some of the terracotta that was Lakey, we found out that there's an epoxy compound put underneath it, and that's why the uh, glazing on top of it is fading. I have an issue uh, with the general contract and the process that he took. Uh, I was sitting down with him in Architects. Right now, I believe it's around uh, around 38,000 is a change order that they're requesting to actually come in and regrind the terracotta surfaces completely smooth I want to visit with them because the approach is proper, but the cost of it, so I don't agree with it. So just maybe we have money within the contingency. You only get 30, I think 32,000 in the contingency. We have not touched on that part. Yet. But let me work out the cost. I have a question. Yes. I have a dumb question. So forgive me. When we do a project, like that this kind of unknown unknown territory i guess a little bit when we get up do we ever sample like a section of it to look at what it might look like underneath it and to get as best as we can i think. did that on the santa fe building it just depends on where do you do your sampling mm -hmm. yeah got, that's fair got a lot of square footage there we just pick random areas where we suspect mm -hmm. that it could be a problem and we found this my issue with the contractor is he went through and wasted a week and a half worth of time instead of notifying us that there was a box in there and continued to work on it. So I think they overcame the credit for that. Uh, let's, see, let's go back to the Santa Fe elevator. I have presented to you each with a two, couple of pictures that kind of help you understand what's going on. <clears throat> Uh, what you're looking at there, the first page, if you're standing in that elevator voice plate, why don't y'all lift that picture up above your head and look straight at that. <laughs> Pretty cute. Now that's what it looks like at the top of the hoist plate. You're looking at a deflector ship up there. 
This is the shed that the that we put in about a year and a half ago in order to keep elevator number two in operation and through the modernization project where we might be totally shut down. So uh, we were at the point uh, the contractor was performing their estate inspection. Uh, estate inspector was here, went through, they did their load test, they put 2,500 pounds on the car. Uh, they start this car to accelerate. Uh, it shuts down when it did. What you're looking at right there is that shaft with those blocks on the side, those plates. It was, was straight one time inside the C chamber. So, uh, is that when it was the, the fall? That was the, heard it? That was the loud noise that everyone had heard. If you look at the second picture that you see there. The second picture right there shows you the plates that support these uh, uh, mounts for the shaft. They should, they should have been welded, is what we feel should have happened. So we reached out to the contractor that originally put this in, well beyond your one degree. Uh, actually, they do not have to come in and do any work to do it. Or to repair this, we were just giving them the opportunity to save their name here and else. That's what they did. We come in and fix it. It starts to spread pretty quick. Uh, I've got a meeting here after court today with our consultant. Again, I spoke to him this morning before court uh, that the contractor did not want to get involved. So, what I'm going to do is go to the current contractor uh, that's doing work on the building, have them give us the cost go ahead and come in and fix this. The shiv that's there, out of the scope of work, uh, we feel that the shiv needs to be removed. That's what looks like a large pulley, the shaft. Uh, send it out to the machine shop, have it examined, make sure it didn't fracture anything. You have a lot of weight. Plus the ropes that's in there, I don't think inspecting the ropes is warranted cables. I think they just need to be completely replaced. We're at, we was at the point to turn that elevator over that day. Let me visit with them. Our holding card would be the liquidated damages on the project. Currently, right now, if we was to hit them with liquidated damages, it was at the end of the project. We've got a uh, projected 154000 <coughs> So, kind of use that as a leverage to come in and do the work and be done with that from that. That's where I hope to go with this. Project. So, how much weight was on this one? It, it is? 25. Is that a normal weight? It is. How many people said? <laughs> <laughs> we tried not to have <laughs> But uh, it was a safety test that required to do it. We found out what the problem was. So, Mike, along those lines, as the contractor, to your point, it should have been welded. Can well, we check that? Here, here's something to look at. I don't have the authority to tell them how to put it in. When you have an elevator contractor, they obtain parts from the manufacturer. The manufacturer says, this is what, how you should put it in. Uh, the elevator company should have on record a engineer record that says, hey, we're taking their material, we're putting it in, it should be installed like this. Uh, I can tell you that the current Elevator adjacent to it, uh, the Piker Shield was put in the same way, so it's in the place for welded, a little different, it's only process. So they received instructions from their power. <coughs> and Scott, if, if this, you know, God forbid, you know, happened with people on the elevator, I mean, we're at huge liability mm -hmm. concerns. Well, yeah, I mean, there is potential for this liability plan if it fails. Subject to what the testament of the claims out. Sure. But, um, yes, potential liability. Well, they quit responding. They just a long, long time ago. They just, well, we worked through uh, with Dave Kemp, sure he was here, and we didn't ever heard anything back from them. I really don't know where we stand on that request to the uh, manufacturer that provided the last we'll talk to the Santa Fe uh, that's one of these items that's been on here for a long time 
Nick, uh, as far as your labs, uh, you still have some issues with them up here periodically. Yeah, we, we, we just go up there and reset them. I'm an electrician with more electric. He keeps an eye on it. He watches it whenever he sees it's same function properly. He'll run up there and reset it. Mm -hmm. That costs about 150 bucks every time. Here they have Well, actually, we're kind of lucky I haven't had one recently. But it seems like when it happens, it happens. What this has had is uh, we'd had the uh, equipment put on top of the building. I believe it's a company out of California for a local supply house here. <clears throat> the lights went up, we started having issues, uh, they just would not keep their sequence of lighting, just started flashing and doing unusual things. We've been through meeting after meeting with the local supply house, we've had the manufacturer on the line a couple of times phone. Uh, there was a letter sent out from the county attorney's office to them, telling them what the county was electing to do as far as to try to settle this issue. Just not. Number 26, the Fulman Adams Road Bridge, the resignation of Daryl Noble, the summer of all the effective office of all 2016. The motion has been approved. The motion is second. The motion is second. As y'all report today, we have 508 people in the jail. 81 females, no one in shoulders, 2% are misdemeanors, and 85 are felons. Have any uh, insurance items? Yes, we have two. One with uh, the road bridge, um, and one with the uh, auto accident. Um, if anyone wants to I think the sheriff's office might need to have the other one to be called. What happened? Yeah, it was a, <clears throat> the auto theft. Auto theft. I get that all the way back. We crashed into a pole. I heard it. Okay, here you go. You talking about the wrecked vehicle? Mm -hmm. I crashed into a pole. I heard it. Didn't see it though. <laughs> <laughs> the report just showed a pole, so I don't know all the details. It just showed a pole that backed in with a mirror. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, here you go. 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 Okay, Truck we are ready. Backing up and not from your off the truck. Uh, I'll be all set in there. Okay, not a lot of detail. I'm not, sure, lot how of you, detail. I'm not sure how you back up <laughs> and knock a mirror off. Okay. Okay. Unless they were on the second floor and they've got those concrete pillars like this. They can back it out and look them back and caught it on one of the pillars. Okay. Now the picture showed a blue cylinder, right? Is it a blue color cylinder? I don't know, the report didn't show injuries at all, so it's just a body shop. Okay. All right. Okay, number 22, Potter County versus Jordan Construction. You need to consider that. <laughs> that will be going down the B, main first district court. We will um, recess for a few minutes, go to executive session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
right? It's 10 and 35 when we go back in session and no action was taken in the executive session. So I make a motion that we accept the settlement agreement with uh, Turning Lane Construction and allow the attorney judge to sign off on it. Second. <coughs> a motion to second. Favor, raise your hand. And budgets for the Clark County Special Funds. Do we have those in attached to anything today? Can we come in? Another way we should have seen the property for the post. Okay. Budget. I just make them more important than others. How many properties are Okay. Okay. So we'll see <laughs> after adoption of the budget to recommend a proposed tax rate for MO and debt service for fiscal year. 2016-2017 to confirm dates for two public hearings on the tax rate and confirm the date for a final vote adopting the tax rate. So, as it stands right now, the budget, at the proposed budget, was a two percent salary increase for everyone across the board, a one percent for the retirees. After consideration, it is my it is my opinion that. We do not do the one percent increase for the retirees for a couple of reasons. I talked to the uh, the governor from the retirement system, Ralph. Ralph Wallace. He advised me that it's basically a Gatsby Gatsby rule that we can only give raises after three full years. So we cannot. We really are not authorized to give a raise to the retirees this year. Is that what your understanding was? You can do it, but you will be considered an entity that gives a race every year. Mm -hmm. So our liability goes up. Okay. Yeah, okay. And then also, he said that in the long run, if we were to do that, um, it would add to our debt service that we have right now, which would actually end up paying six hundred and something thousand dollars for this rate for these for the retirees. So I withdraw that from the budget. <laughs> Which will put how much money back in? Thirty-seven. Is there any, any other discussion? Any more changes anybody else would propose? I don't propose uh, a change, but I certainly would uh, encourage the court to keep in mind these retirees as we go into future years. You know, of all the folks that uh, are indebted to the people that have put in 20, 30, 40 years for this county, I think we overlook them sometimes, and I wish we would. I agree. I, I think we're considering them too, but I also think that we ought to set aside the whole amount rather than put us in debt for exactly. $640,000. We have to pay it out over. 15 year period, which that's what we were doing. Uh, paying 37000 a year to pay off that one raise. I think if you want to do it, let's go ahead and budget the whole, whole amount to pay it off. I agree with that. Okay, anything, any other discussion from anybody? There are a couple of items. Uh, at the bottom of the list, the changes. First of all, we need to adjust purchasing of this budget to what was approved by the district with the board of judges. So we need to add five thousand dollars to that travel account. We need an additional cell phone allowance in addition to Trans Office plus this location of those went up. That's nine hundred and seventy dollars. And then somehow um, local 
Judge, did we hear back? Uh, I know Judge Sermon addressed the court um, during budget, which is uh, a little unusual as it related to visiting judges' line items. I know we've talked about several times. Did we hear anything from Judge Roberts as a result of that? You, you did not. I, I had not so I just didn't know the lawyer. I did, but it was just between him and I. Okay. okay. It was good. He's good. Okay. I'll make it work. So they have to. Right. That's all it's in the budget. That's it. Okay, so do we need a do we need a motion on the proposed budget or just make it? that wishes to speak, so um, we need a motion to adopt the budget and to set the tax rate. rate as last year, which was 0 0.66402. Uh, the effective tax rate will increase from 0 0.63391 to 0 0.64450, thereby bringing in about $1.5 million for the come, upcoming year, which will in effect raise taxes a percentage of the 29% of the citizens in the town whose property values went up or go up. 
four hundred thousand dollar home. Anyway, so, so I propose that we set that the tax rate, effective the tax rate, and um, giving a two percent increase in salary across the board. We approved the final budget for fiscal year 2016 17 and the budgets for the Fire County Special Funds. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor of that hand. I move we uh, approve a tax rate for M and O of point zero point six one four one nine in a uh, debt service tax rate of zero point zero four zero zero nine for a total of point six six four zero two. Public hearings to be at uh, 5 30 on September the 8th in the Regular Commissioner's Court and also for September the 12th at 9 a.m. in the Commissioner's Court. And the final hearing on the 26th in the Regular Commissioner's Court. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay. 
else we're going to do. Okay. What about the... Um, Okay, do we have any agenda items for next time? Um, Judge, if I can have uh, Shannon have the Neighborhood Initiative Project, a partnership with the city. We have a couple of updates on that. Okay. Anything else? Is there any other comment? Not for the 